Hello, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to do a little garden update on what survived the frost here in Western Kentucky. We had our first hard frost and I don't think all of my plants were ready. <laughs> um, so I'm going to harvest what I can. Uh, obviously I'm gonna be picking some things a little early. That's all right, I'll make do. And then I'm going to prepare some of these beds for something else. Um, it looks like the beans did not make it. The squash and melons did not make it. Looks like the delicata squash was super close, but no cigar. And Kajari melon, nowhere near close. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and chuck that out here for the animals. Whoever gets it, gets it. The cantaloupe, it looks pretty dang close. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that inside and let it ripen off the vine. My poor Desi squash, look how much squash was trying to grow on it. <laughs> yes, I love the Desi squash, that is definitely a keeper. That squash and um, the Gete Okosoman or Kentucky squash are definite keepers. The heavy hitter okra did not make it and look how much okra I was starting to get on these plants. I mean, that's a shame, but at least I know it's a good okra for me. Um, looks like I had some straight neck yellow squash growing. That's no longer going to happen. But what did survive the frost? I don't think I got around to planting anything in those two tubs. I'm going to plant spinach though. Spinach or kale for sure. Um, the peas made it. I'm checking, see if I need a water. I turned the water on, but I don't think I need a water. I even still have some peas sprouting. So those are doing great. Looks like I got some ragged jack kale or red Russian kale growing. And I also got some dazzling blue spinach uh, kale and it might be that I planted one type in there and the other type in here. But this is, uh, I can't remember the variety. It's going to be purple and it's a Mangolia pea. And then this is my lettuce bed. The lettuce survived even though it's tiny. So that's good. And I don't need to water. I still feel moisture. Looks like I got turnips or radishes growing in there with the beets and everything in this bed survived. The beets don't look, this plant doesn't look extremely happy, but the other ones do. These older beets look good. Radishes, they don't care. Radishes just, they just grow. <clears throat> and it looks like I've got more turnips or something growing in here. I think they're turnips, but yeah, I'm gonna plant spinach in those two barrels whenever I remember, but my zinnias did not go and neither did the holy basil. I should have harvested all of that holy basil and just set it off to the side and let it start drying out, but I didn't. My nephew loves holy basil and so does my sister. But yeah, these beets are doing good. These are the De Detroit dark red beets. Um, so that's what's going on now. Uh, the asparagus, obviously, it's cold hardy. It's still there. So I'm gonna make room for the <coughs> asparagus. I might go ahead and plant kale in those two remaining barrels and spinach out this bed. Oh no. I know I'm not gonna do anything in these barrels. I mean, in these kiddie pools. I'm definitely not doing anything with the smaller one over there because nothing seems to grow in there. I think it's just too small to hold moisture for any amount of time doesn't have deep enough root set up structure is another possibility but I know it dries out a lot um, and hopefully I could get these bigger kitty pools um, filled topped off with composted chicken manure <coughs> and let it set for next year but I'm gonna go ahead and harvest what I can bring it inside and over the next day or two be cleaning this up probably not all at once because this is quite a bit of cleanup <laughs> let's be honest um that and i have other things i'd like to accomplish um on my few days off um so yeah oh the basil i had purple opal basil here and it's gone oh, i might as well check that out see if the animals want some i like to chuck stuff out here and see if the animals want to pick through it and if they don't that I chuck it in the compost pile in the next day or two. So that's my, that's what I'm gonna end up doing with these plants. Just so let you know, that's kind of like my little system going on. Um, 
And I still got to go out to Bub's and get some pallets, which maybe I can do that tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow. I'll have to text him and see what he's doing. Um, also, while we're staring at nothing, let's go stare at something. There, we could stare at Buffy. The little buff lace polish there, I named her Buffy. I don't have a name for my little silky pullet yet. But that's definitely Buffy. Um, I do, I am going to be making a crochet tutorial for an egg. I started a second set, um, and all I got left to finish on it is the egg. And I'm also making a quote unquote rubber duck for my boss lady's Jeep, because I just now learned of hashtag duck duck jeep or ducking jeep or jeep ducking and I had to look it up because I was fixing to make her a mallard <laughs> and I'm glad I did because then I understand it started out with rubber duck so I'm crocheting her a rubber duck um, yeah so I think I'll be putting out that tutorial as well but I think I'm gonna save most of my crochet tutorials for the winter time that way I have content um, so, oh, I can also update you on the horses. Hi, Mary. She thinks I might have grain. She was pretty skittish when we first got her. She was in a stall with a mean horse and she had bite marks and part of her mane was like hanging off. She actually healed up really nice, but yeah, she's starting to come up to us now, basically because we've been graining them by hand twice a day. Um, Let's go take a look at Willie. Hi, pretty girl. Let's see what she does. Hi. Can I touch you? Can I pet you? She says, no, you don't have food. I don't want you. Well, here comes Mr. Willie. You can see it in his eyes. He is draining a lot less, and his purr, that, disappears quite often. So, whatever we are feeding him is doing him good. He probably has something internal going on, um, is what I'm gathering. Not quite sure. Uh, we are almost done with the added supplements, and not sure if he's gaining weight or not. We'll have to look at past videos. Um, if he is not... We are going to be um, drawing blood and taking it into the Amish people that we talked about. Triple J Farm and Fence in Crofton, Kentucky. They can spin blood and send it off and have it tested. And they're very helpful people. Um, they're the ones that recommended this feed and supplement regiment, which we decided we're going to stick with the Yoder Brothers grain and then do the supplementing twice a year. Um, see how that works? Because they gave us a couple different supplements, if, if uh, you remember correctly. If not, check out my last video. Um, I could probably post a card up here. Um, but we've been adding that, and we ran out of canola oil, and we read that peanut oil is really good for horses, and it's peanut oil type time of year because of Thanksgiving coming up. A lot of people like to fry their turkeys. And so we found some at Rural King, three gallons for $35. Kroger wants $50 for three gallons, and I'm not sure what Walmart's pricing was, but Rural King is where we found it the cheapest, so that's where we purchased it from. Um, so we've been adding peanut oil into their uh, feed twice a day as well for extra calories, trying to put some weight on. He does look a little better, I mean, and he acts a little better. He doesn't act so lethargic. Um, like I said, his allergy symptoms seem to be getting better. Um, he's still purring, obviously, but when we go out to grain him, you don't hear him. So obviously it's lightening up. I just thought we'd give you a little update on that. At least it's doing some good for the horses, you know, and that's what we want. We want the best for our animals. We also picked up this round bale feeder at Rural King for maybe $350, $400 and added the, some of the extra chain link fence we got in it to keep the hay from dropping because they are wasting so much hay. They'll just let it, they'll drag it out, step on it, and then they don't want to eat it. And they are probably wasting at least a couple days worth of hay. And 
you know, right now we have bought round bales from the neighbor for $25 a bale, but once he runs out, who knows how much we're gonna pay a bale from somebody else. And thank you, Doug K from His Way Homesteading for identifying Mr. Campbell there, the one quacking. He is a Drake Khaki Campbell. He is not a hen. Um, I mean, literally just a few, a day before I posted the video about my duck's breeds, his head was lighter color and I Googled it and he really did look like a young Drake from what I looked up, but I didn't look it up in time before posting that. Just, I was looking on, I know Rural King gets their chickens, their, their uh, birds from Hoover Hatchery. So I looked up on Hoover Hatchery website, what waterfowl they offer and Khaki Campbell's what looked the most like Mr. Campbell there. So it's Mr. Campbell, the Khaki Campbell and Mallory, the Mallard hen. <laughs> Don't hate on my naming game, okay? <laughs> it's hard finding names for them. Then there's Mama Hen. She's so pretty. The beautiful spotted one there. That's Mama. And then the one to the right. That one is pretty too. But she doesn't like the coop. She ends up sleeping on the carport's uh, porch swing. And I try to sneak up on her at night. And the leaves give me away and she ends up and flying off. So I'm going to need a couple hands to try to catch a hen to show her where the coop is. I haven't found any eggs over there where she's perched. So I'm not sure if she's laying and if she is, then where? But the other day I got four Australorp eggs in a day. Um, so they are coming out of their molt and starting to lay better. So hopefully they'll be good producers for this winter. My Brahmas, they're still laying good. Kim is still laying, but not as good. And the black one is still laying, but laying as normal. What she lays every day, every couple day, well, every other day or every few days, typically. The little babies are getting bigger. They're probably about as big as my silky pullet, but my silky pullet is basically fluff. <laughs> So I haven't picked up the babies yet, but I probably should because these Australorps act like they've never had attention before. But Mr. Henry here has won them over. They love Henry. They think he's awesome. So he is the man. All right, everybody. Thank you for visiting my channel, and I hope you enjoyed something. And look out for my future tutorials and the updates on the horses and the updates on the garden. And I love you, and so does Jesus. God bless.